Hello and welcome to the American College of Technology's Financial Aid Orientation. In this orientation you will learn the basics of how to complete your FAFSA and your virtual financial aid office interview. The first step when applying at ACOT is to go to fafsa.ed.gov and this will be where you'll complete your FAFSA for ACOT. You will then click on Start a New FAFSA to begin. Halfway through the process, it'll ask you for a school code, and you will put in 041187, and this will be what prompts the FAFSA to go to the American College of Technology. If at any point in this process you have a question, please click on the Help tab at the top, and that will take you to a FAFSA representative who will be able to guide you in the process. Once you complete your FAFSA, you will then want to go to acot.vfao.com to complete your virtual financial aid office interview. If you have not registered for an account, please click on Register Now to do so. Once you have registered, you will then click on the Interview section at the top left. Now there are three important parts of this page here. The first page is the instructional video that I would highly recommend you watch. If you click here, it will take you to an instructional video on the Virtual Financial Aid Office. If you have already seen this video, the next step will be to complete your Master Promissory Note. If you click on this tab here, it will take you to studentloans.gov to sign your Master Promissory Note. This is the biggest mistake I see students make at ACOT is not completing their MPN. If you do not sign your MPN, your loans will not come in despite what your award letter says. And once you've signed your MPN, you will then click on Start a New Interview. I will not be going over every section of this interview, but only the sections with the most questions prompted by students. The first question most students ask is, what if I don't know my parents' information or if I cannot contact them? Well, there's two sections under this. One, for your parents' status is known slash living. The other is deceased or unknown. If your parents are deceased or you're not in contact with them, please select deceased or unknown. If they are known and living, then you will select that and that will prompt you to fill out your parents' information. The next, next section is under your terms of attendance. You can see here that these dates will obviously not match up with your dates here, but the point here is that you select eight classes that you will attend at ACOT. It's imperative that you select all eight classes from your starting date. For example, if you started on 4-7-2014, you would want to select eight classes from 4-7-2014. You'll also notice on the right that every class I've selected, I've put full-time attendance. As a student going to ACOT, as long as you are enrolled in at least one class and module, you will be considered a full-time student. Under your financial aid enrollment, the first question will prompt you, what is your EFC? Your EFC is the number generated at the end of your FAFSA, and you can also see it in your student aid report, which will be an email that you received after you complete your FAFSA. For the second question, it will ask you your grade level, and you will want to select freshman regardless of how many credits you are transferring in. If you transfer in enough credits to become a sophomore, we will adjust accordingly. For your expected graduation date, put approximately two years from the day you're starting. If you have a bachelor's degree, select yes, otherwise select no, and, if, and all students will be living off campus when they attend ACOT. And the final question, all students are neither employees nor employees dependents at ACOT. Under your processing options, you have three options for selecting your funds. You can select grants and loans, which will be a combination of Pell Grants and direct loans. You can select grants only, which will just give you Pell Grants, and loans only, which will just give you loans. If you select anything with loans in it, it will take you to this section here. Now, you have three options for specifying your loans. Your first is you can specify that you want to request the maximum amount that you're eligible for. The second, you can apply for standard cost, which that will only take out what is needed to pay for your schooling. You will borrow some funds, but it will not exceed what is needed, and you will minimize the debt that you will go into. The third section is you can take out a specific amount. You can see here I selected 4500 because usually if you combine that with our average Pell Grant, that's about what is needed a year in loans to cover your attendance. You'll notice again the uh, interview gives you the option to sign your promissory note. 
I cannot stress how imperative it is to sign your MPN. Not doing so will not give you your loans. So if you have not signed your MPN, once again click on this link to take you there and then you'll have to click on the tab saying that you understand that you have signed your MPN. And a few things to remember before we end. You are a full-time student. Standard cost means you're only borrowing what you need to pay for your schooling and in the section called Terms of Attendance you will need to select eight modules which will be a full year. If you have any questions, please contact the Financial Aid Department.